But I wanted to spend a bit more time today talking about and then demonstrating to you uh, bots and AI on top of Microsoft Teams and how bots is extending the capabilities of the platform. Uh, many of you may have heard um, of this solution, the UNSW solution. Uh, Dr. David Kellerman um, from the School of Mechanical Engineering has been working with us quite closely and Microsoft over the last two to three years. And ultimately, he has built a, a teaching and learning solution uh, and QBot is a big part of that. I, I just wanted to show this slide for context first because it's not something that's happened overnight. Uh, David and his vision uh, started quite early in, in 2017 and he's been quite clear about that ever since and, and that's been to really create a learning community of 500 students in one place. Uh, and as you can see from this slide, it's been in incremental improvements, iterations that have been made to the platform that started just with vanilla out of the box teams um, for communication and collaboration with students. Uh, it's obviously extended right up to the end of that piece now, we're in 2020. Um, and he's doing a lot of advanced functionality like obviously bots, but also AI, leveraging machine learning to auto mark exam papers that, that are visual diagrams, building custom study packs for students, uh, personalized dashboards uh, that have been implemented so students can see how they're comparing with other students. So this is all on the Teams platform, but it's been a journey to get to that point. What, what has really made this is a success has been David's commitment to uh, the project and ultimately him seeing that through as part of his vision. So we'll jump into it and have a look at this in a minute. We'll focus on QBot as part of the teaching and learning solution. But just to set this, the scene, this solution is front-ended through Teams. So there's integration with learning management system that the university is using, Moodle, um, and there are up to 20 Microsoft services that are actually being leveraged in the background. So you'll see QBot today. Um, David is running his lectures, streaming them through Stream. He's obviously got collaboration happening within Teams. He's using OneNote, PowerPoint, uh, many other services as well. Um, so, but, but for the student, Teams is the front end to all of that uh, collaboration happening in the back end. Before I jump in, the last slide I wanted to show you just for context is, is this slide here. And importantly, this slide is trying to illustrate that the collaboration that's happening through the teaching and learning solution and with QBot is happening within the environment itself. It's happening within the collaborative nature of the work that, that students and lecturers and teachers are working with. Uh, it's not a separate application. It's not living on the side. It's not separate to what is happening in Moodle. Um, it is in one place that makes it so much more powerful. Um, so with that, I'll jump in and hopefully you can still see my screen. If you can't, just yell out. But in this screen here, I'm logged into Microsoft Teams as Kelly and Kelly's a student and uh, ultimately, she's part of the Maths 2400 subject. Uh, we're in week three, uh, but I can see my previous week's got topics here and I can see that algebra has been lined up for next week. Uh, but in the general tab, the first thing I'll notice is there's already collaboration happening. I've got Michael, who's my, my lecturer. He's posted some content here, the course outline, QBot, the, the bot that's surfacing information based on questions that are being asked has been deployed to the channel and we'll demonstrate that in a minute. And there's, there's students that are communicating and collaborating with each other here, posting questions, getting answers. But we're in week three, so I'm gonna hop into the probability theory topic. That's our, that's our topic for this week. Um, and the first thing you'll know, notice here is there are already questions being asked. And the first thing that I wanna demonstrate is how QBot works. So QBot is, is, a, is a bot service and we call QBot when we wanna ask it a question. And what we're trying to do here is get an instant answer to a question that, um, has hopefully been answered before. So I'm going to ask a question here of QBot, who created probability? So I'm interested in knowing who actually came up with this theory. And in this case, QBot's going to go to its database and look to see if that information has been, has been searched for, that question's been asked before. Uh, if it has been asked, it's going to return me an answer. If it hasn't been asked, if it's a new question, uh, it's then going to a tag my demonstrator. So in this case here, it's returned me a question. It has already been asked. It's, it's a question that's already been asked. And you can see the question has been returned with an answer, a branch of math mathematics concerned with the analysis of random phenomena. Hmm, actually that doesn't answer my question. That's not correct. So I've got two options here. This is helpful, which marks as a correct answer, or tag a demonstrator, which actually will tag my demonstrator and mention this is not the correct answer to my question. Uh, and can you please go and fix this question? So as I do that, my demonstrator's name's Andrew, and Andrew is actually logged in as well. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so you can see Andrew's tag there. Now Andrew can come in and fix that answer. Uh, but let's ask another question um, that Qbot does have the answer to. 
and we'll say Qbot, uh, what is addition rule? And same process will happen. Qbot will go away, it's going to search its database and see has this question been answered before? And if it has been answered, it's going to return me that answer. And if it obviously hasn't, it will tag my demonstrator again. Um, so this is obviously a pretty common question you're asking when you're doing uh, probability theory, and you can see here it's returned that question with 100% confidence rating. So that was helpful. I'm going to mark that as helpful. Give the, the system the feedback that um, this is this is actually the answer I was looking for as part of this question. So that's great. We've looked at two scenarios, asking questions and getting answers that are text-based. But what if these what if these things are visually based? What if we're asking a visually based question? Now, this is where QR codes come in. Um, obviously, over video, it's hard to demonstrate this properly. So I'm just going to scroll up to a previous week and pick a previous uh, question that Kelly actually submitted with her mobile phone of a of a diagram. Uh, and it's got a QR code on the material there so that the QBot is able to recognize exactly what question is being asked here. So once that's been loaded, you can see QBot's been called and it's recognized that, hey, I see you're working on question one. And I can actually view that question here Get more information about it and I can either see an answer or watch the solution. That's quite cool. So I can watch watch a solution here and it's going to take me to stream. Now I actually didn't when I shared my screen I didn't enable my audio so you won't hear this but you'll get the idea in a minute. So once I push play it will take me through the process. Of <laughs> if I still need more information about that I can see I can actually see the answer as well so I can be guided through that process uh, once I click see an answer. So the other thing here is we're, we're talking about collaboration that's happening within a group. It's happening in the team. Everyone can see what's going on. But in many scenarios, we'll actually want Qbot to work in a personalized sense as well. So what happens if I actually want to send a hint to that question? Can I get a hint that's going to tell me what direction I need to move in as opposed to full information? And you can see the chat window. And it sent me a hint for question one, AC equals RB. That's quite cool. So now I can actually go and, and, and work on that without everybody else receiving that hint as well. Um, but what else can I do from in here? Can I also have a conversation with Qbot one on one? 100%. So the purpose here is that Qbot is not just about group conversations and answering questions to the group. It also knows who I am as an individual. So I can ask questions here like, when is my next tutorial? And it will go and search the database in the background again because it knows who I am and it will return me an answer. So I can also ask things like, yeah, what is my next test? Again. And it's going to bring that information back as well. The last example here that I'll show um, is using, using Stream as a service to, to record lectures that then allows me to uh, save that lecture down so david saving his lectures that are then transcribed because we know we know stream transcribes video automatically now and then putting that transcription into a, a sql database to make it searchable why we want to do that because we want to allow students to be able to search for terms and return a time stamped video of when that occurred now as i just mentioned a second ago i didn't actually share my audio when i when i shared my screen so i'm just going to stop sharing for one second and I'll share my screen again, but this time just include my system audio. So now once I search this again, so if I search for now Riemann integral. So Riemann integral is a term that's been used in a lecture recording, and I want to see where that, that term has been used within that recording, but I don't want to have to watch the whole 50 minute recording. So it's going to go away. It's going to return the stream video to me. Now if my audio settings are working, when I push play on this video, it's going to start, take me to a timestamp position in the video. Or something like that. You really need to know what an integral is. And actually, what's pi? So we'll also be carefully defining pi um, and showing that it's equal to these two things. So you can see there, it took me to three minutes 30 odd, and it started by talking around integral, and these move into pi, and eventually we'll move into Roman, uh, to Riemann integral. So really, really interesting use of the technology, really quite powerful. Okay, so I thought I'd just stop there, the demonstration there. Um, I hope you got the idea in terms of how UNSW has been extending um, the, the platform through the use of bots and AI. Um, it's quite powerful in terms of what's, what's been done there. 
And then the next question we often get from customers is, well, that's fantastic. That's a great use case within um, education, but how does that apply more broadly? And this is where we look at bots, uh, a solution here called Ask HR Plus. Think of that this is a more horizontal type solution. Um, taking the concept of bots, using all that data that's being created, we can mine that data based on the questions that are being asked, uh, and then bringing staff to one place to ask those questions, to get answers, and then to help us make from an HR perspective, decisions based on that data, quite powerful.